All right, so in this section, we're going to actually go through the process of balancing a redox reaction. Now, redox reactions are, can be a little more complicated. If you've ever had a reaction that was kind of difficult to balance the old way, probably was a redox, you just didn't know it. Now, this looks like a lot of statements, but I've written out everything specifically uh, so that there's no confusion. And also, this is very systematic. You do this first, and then this second, and third, and there's no variations to it. So as long as you can methodically go through each one of these steps, uh, this actually isn't too bad. So a couple things here. Number one, obviously before we can do any balancing, we've got to know what the net ionic equation is. We've got to have that first. So we've got to write formulas, we've got to do that, we've got to predict products, we've got to do that, and then we get to net ionic. So here's the first thing you do. Assign oxidation numbers to every atom. Now, can't, do you actually have to write it or can you list, uh, you know, sort of have it in your head to know what they are? Because here's what you need to do is you need to then be able to identify what is the oxidation and what is the reduction half reaction. Okay, and just like we talked about in section one, what what's getting oxidized and what's getting reduced and write that half reaction. That's probably the most important part. We talk in AP Chem, uh, it's all about the setup. You make the you identify the right pieces, then it's easy. If you don't identify the right pieces, then we've obviously got issues. Okay. Next thing, you're going to balance the elements in each half reaction. So the first thing you're going to balance are all the elements that are not called oxygen and not called hydrogen. Plain and simple. Balance them all. Balance them to normal. We got two on the left. We need two on the right. So on and so forth. Then we're going to balance oxygens and hydrogens. Now, we're going to use water for oxygens. So that means if I don't have the right number of oxygens on both sides, I'm actually going to write in waters to the side I need to balance the oxygens. Now, why can I do that? Because we've got net ionic equations. We've got stuff that's aqueous all over the place. And then I'm going to write in H pluses to balance any hydrogens that are not balanced. A little tweak here that we'll, we'll save for later. We do both of the, we do both steps if the reaction involves an acid or if it involves a base. So that doesn't matter. Well, what about, why are we putting H pluses in if it's a base reaction that has OHs? We'll get to that later, that's a later step. So all reactions, that's what you do. Number four. The bal you bounce the number of electrons in each, each half reaction to get the complete half reaction. What I mean by that is if you got two iron atoms and they both lost electrons, you've got to take that into account. Number six, add the two net ionic equations back together. So again, this goes back to that divide and conquer. We divided stuff and then we balanced it. Now we're putting it back together and now we're going to finish the job. We're going to add the reactions back together, and the coefficient should show the number of atoms that are involved in the redox. So if it's a base reaction, then we've got an extra step, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. That's a 6A, so we'll come back to that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to transfer all those coefficients from the net ionic reaction back into the original reaction. And then we might have to balance some spectator stuff. So any of that oddball stuff that's left over. Okay. All right. So let me give just a, uh, a simple one here. Uh, let's do copper chloride plus sodium metal. We get sodium chloride plus copper metal. Balance it. Okay. Let's just say that's the reaction. So, first thing we do, identify oxidation numbers, assign them to every atom, okay? split them up, write them as separate net ionic equations. So, going through here, I see sodium that's by itself, that's a zero. Copper by itself, that's a zero. Hmm. Sodium in a compound, that's a plus. Copper in a compound with two chlorines, that's a two plus charge, two plus oxidation number. That giveaway for a redox. You've got it as an element, and then it's in a compound, or vice versa. So,
copper went from plus two to zero, and sodium went from zero to plus one. Copper decreased its oxidation number. Copper was reduced. Sodium increased its oxidation number. So it was oxidized. All right, so we're assuming these are all aqueous, then we want net ionic equations. Well, if we look here, what's net? The chlorines are spectators. We don't even need to include them. So here's really what happened. We had a copper, two plus, and two sodiums, two, and electrons moved so that now sodium is the positive ion and copper is the zero. All right. So now we go through the steps. We balance the elements in the half reaction, the non-oxygens and hydrogens, and then all the oxygens and hydrogens. Well, sorry, back up. We've got to do our half reactions. Okay. We actually haven't written our half reaction, so we're back up here in two and three. Okay. So, what's our half reaction? Our oxidation half reaction is two sodium atoms changing into two Na pluses. Okay. And then our redox reaction is a copper atom changing into a copper two plus. That's the change that occurred. So now what we need to do is go through and balance all the other parts to that. So balance the elements in the reaction. The non-oxygens and hydrogens, there's, everything's balanced, copper and sodium, pretty easy. There's no oxygens and hydrogens left over. That's easy. Now we got to balance electrons in each half reaction to complete it. All right, so let's look here. What actually happened? We had two sodiums that each had a zero charge. Now we've got two sodiums that are a plus one. That means each sodium must have lost an electron. And again, not lost, but had two electrons separated from it. If we kind of think the algebra, we had, we had two zeros that turned into two ones plus two negative ones. Now, if we look here, copper zero changed into two plus. Actually, if you notice here, I just did this one backwards. Copper two plus changed into copper zero. So I need to do that. And it's all about the setup. I even screwed I screwed that one up. So how do I get copper two plus to reduce down to zero? Two electrons were needed to do that. So now we can kind of see what's happening here. There were two sodium atoms that lost two electrons. Those two electrons left the sodium and went to, to co or went to a copper ion. Those two electrons then were bonded to that copper ion, and it became a copper atom. Uh, add the two reactions together. Coefficients show the number of atoms involved. Bounce spectator ions may already be balanced, all that stuff, so kind of type loose ends. It's not a base. So we had nothing else to do. So we literally just add these two reactions back together. So what do we have? We have two sodium atoms plus a copper ion makes two sodium ions plus a copper atom. And we could take that and balance it if we needed to back up into that original equation. Now the significance of this 
is this will produce a certain amount of electricity, which we'll talk about later. All right, here's the Cliff Notes version. Again, we've got to split the ionic reaction into the oxidation half and the reduction half. Then we got to balance it. We got to balance all the uh, elements that aren't oxygen and hydrogen. Then we balance oxygen using water. Then we balance hydrogen using H pluses. And then we got to make sure the electrons are taken care of also, that they're equal. And then we add the reactions together, transfer it back to the original reaction, and then look for any spectator ions. Again, don't worry about bases yet. So th the last thing here, when you think about those half reactions, remember we're talking about net ionic. We don't break covalent bonds. Right? So you break apart two ions, but you don't break apart an ion. Another example, if we have sodium nitrate, yeah, we'll break sodium away from nitrate, but we're not going to break nitrate apart. Again, back to our uh, ionic and covalent compounds and stuff. All right, here's one I want you to sort of work on. Okay. We'll do this one together, and then I got one more to do by yourself. So let's sign oxidation numbers. Copper's a zero when it's alone. It's with sulfate here. It's a two plus. I see hydrogen in a compound, hydrogen in a compound, oxygen in a compound, oxygen in a compound. Got sulfur here. Sulfur would be a four here. If I come back over here, hydrogens are two, oxygens are minus eight, a two and a minus eight, plus six. So I know copper is going to get oxidized because it goes from a zero to a two plus. Sulfur is going to get reduced because it goes from a six down to a four. So we want to keep that in the back of our heads. Next thing, we want to write net ionic equation. So net ionic equation here, uh, we write, we split everything apart that's ionic. So we've got coppers plus 2H pluses plus SO4s, plus copper 2 pluses plus more SO4s plus SO2s plus waters. Now we identify our half reactions. Oxidation is copper, went to copper 2 plus. So our oxidation, copper 0, went to copper 2 plus. Our reduction was the sulfurs in sulfate. Now if we notice here, we got sulfurs and sulfate on both sides. We also have sulfurs at SO2. So what does that tell us? That actually tells us some change. Some may not. So if we have a bunch of sulfurs, some are going to change, some won't change. So our reduction then is the sulfurs in the sulfate ion change to SO2. If we get, if we get to this point, we're in good shape because we've just done the hardest part. All right, so let's go back here real quick and look at our steps. We want to balance the non-oxygen and hydrogen atoms, and then we want to balance oxygen and hydrogen. We're going to use waters for oxygens and H pluses for hydrogens. Now, copper. We have one copper on each side. There's no oxygens, there's no hydrogens. Stop. Sulfur and oxygen. I got a sulfur on each side. That's good. I got four O's on the left. I only got two on the right. So I need to add two waters. Now, I've created four hydrogens on the right. So now I need four hydrogens on the left. And again, we can do these as H pluses because sulfuric acid was in there and you know, we're allowed to do this with aqueous stuff. 
Next thing is electrons. Well, oxidation is lose, oil and Leo. So that means the copper would have lost two electrons. Here, the sulfur went from a six down to a four, so that must have meant two electrons on the left-hand side. Right? Rig and Gur. Reduction is gain, gain is reduction. Now I have the two reactions together. Now what's nice is the number of electrons are the same, two and two. So I can just add them straight up. If they're not, I gotta, you know, multiply by two or multiply by three to make it work. So now I start collecting terms. What's left over? I got four H pluses, plus an SO4 two minus, plus a copper, makes a copper two plus, plus an SO2, plus two waters. So this is what did change in the reaction. So here's what happened. Four H pluses and an SO4 and a copper atom were all involved in the reaction and they changed. Electrons moved. And when the electrons moved, they, they created a copper ion, a sulfur dioxide molecule, and water. So the copper changed its charge, the sulfur and the oxygens and the hydrogens rearranged how, the, how they are. So now what we do is we just put those coefficients back up into the reaction. So if we come up here, and let's take this. see here. Why it's not letting me screen capture? I don't know. There we go. I take this right here. bring it down here and here's what I'm going to have. I'm going to have a 4 H pluses. So I need a 2 out in front of there. I have an SO4. Now wait a second, wait a second, I already got two. Remember here this is all that changes. I got one copper, I got one copper 2 plus, I got one SO2, and I got two waters. So here's what happened. You had two SO4s in H2SO4. One of them stayed and one of them changed. Now, could you have bounced that on your own? Maybe. That's where you're going to see some of these are a little bit harder than others. All right. So last thing. I know this is going to, has been a little bit long. I want you to do this one on your own. This is kind of a show me that we'll do in class. And we got this one. And this is probably one uh, also that I want you to do. So you got two of them. And I'm sure we will take some more time in class. This is just something that takes a little bit of practice. But once you've got it, you know, then you can uh, get pretty good at it.